Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Wednesday morning mountain weather update. All right, to Alta, Utah, it was a struggle yesterday with that southwest wind, and then it rotated a little bit, and we finally reached the double digits. They're saying a storm total of 15 inches. So, you know, it was it was rough most of the day yesterday, and then we finally kicked in 8, 10, 12 inches of new snow, and we ended up at about 15 there for Alta. Uh, in Big Cottonwood Canyon, there's a couple of flurries still coming down. Um, they're saying about 13 inches as far as a storm total, or at least over the last 48 hours. And you can see all the snow in the box there on the snow stake uh, up in Big Cottonwood at Solitude. All right, let's go to Colorado. And as expected, the bullseyes are playing out, uh, the snow bullseyes. This is Crested Butte snow report. So 31 inches in the last 48 hours, between two and three feet. And that is the case over in Aspen, Aspen Highlands, Snowmass, Buttermilk, 33 inches in the last 48 hours. So working on three feet. There's no question that higher up on the mountain, and especially if you were to go to the west side over towards Irwin, I'm sure we're at 40, 45, 48 inches plus up there. So that may have actually played out and verified. You know, I talked about how Irwin could get 40 to 50 inches. That may very well be the case. I'll be interested to, to, to see and to hear a report out of there. So if anybody knows, let me know. Um, let's go to Vail. So up I-70, looking really good. Two feet in two days up there at Vail. And Vail Mountain opens in five days, and conditions are obviously going to be very good. Okay, let me take you to radar. So out of Colorado, this is the last part of our storm. It's coming through Denver. We've got a northeasterly wind with this and a surge of snow up and down I-25 and I-70. Um, the brunt of the storm will be moving away after this morning. Um, let me take you to Utah. A tiny bit of lake effect snow continuing. You can kind of see that little plume disappears on the last frame. Um, but drier air will also be moving in across the Wasatch. So storm largely over for the Wasatch, still continuing over parts of Colorado. Um, here's water vapor satellite imagery. So again, on this year, moisture loft is in the whites and the blues. And you can kind of see this area right here of enhanced moisture. That is all going to be sliding out of Colorado. Now, there is a storm system associated with this. That's what turns into this storm system for the Northeast, uh, 1128 and 1129. I'll tell you, though, in today's update, not looking quite as strong. Um, in fact, here are my bullet points this morning. So the Colorado snow continues this morning, 1127. And then drier air will cut in. I'll show you the time height forecast for that in a second. And then the Northeast storm system, 1128 and 1129, several inches for a lot of the big ski areas. Uh, and then across the west, as all this is happening, this high pressure ridge is going to build in basically 1128 through 126. So it, it's going to be a long duration um, high pressure ridge as it looks right now. Um, so this is the last storm that we have moving through Colorado of this storm cycle. Here are my uh, latest uh, snow timeline dates, odds of best snow, and notice it's blank for the Wasatch, Tetons, and Tahoe. I really, I don't see anything in the immediate future. Colorado, you've got light to moderate this morning, and then you're also in that blank category for at least a solid week. Interior BC, you've got light accumulations, 11, 28, 29, and 30, and then heavy 12, 5, and 12, 6. So you can kind of see everything's shifting to the north. Everything shifts up into BC. In the northeast, there's your storm, 28, 29, and then light accumulations on 12, 1, and also 12-2. Here's the time height forecast for Loveland Ski Area. So the last little bit is hanging on with this storm system. You can see the green. This is a humidity forecast for all the vertical layers of the atmosphere for the next 72 hours. Timelines at the bottom, you read that from right to left, and we're still in that wall of green early this morning, but then it starts to erode. Dry air cuts in at the higher levels, and it eventually eats away all the moisture all the way down to the ridge tops the high peaks by this afternoon, and certainly that'll be the case tomorrow and beyond. It's all dry air. That's the yellow and the orange. Lift goes away. Things change drastically across Colorado. One thing, though, to note, as that dry air comes in and skies clear, it is going to be a very cold night tonight into tomorrow morning across the mountains and the mountain valleys of Colorado, probably 15 to 20 below and a lot of high mountain valleys, and, and certainly over the high peaks. This is Breckenridge's temperature forecast for the next roughly seven days. Notice tonight, tomorrow morning, 16 degrees below zero Fahrenheit in Breck, 10 below on um, Friday morning. 
So we've got a couple of very cold mornings coming, even nine below on Saturday morning. But then look what happens. Down the road, high pressure, warmer air, and eventually highs start to move above freezing. By the time we get into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of next week, uh, even lows are on the plus side. So it's cold for the next few mornings, well below zero across mountain valleys of Colorado, but then it starts to warm up. And the high peaks, I, I don't want to leave those out. You know, a lot of the 14ers are going to be 15, 20 below in the next couple of mornings. All right, here's the jet stream forecast. So close of business today. You still have that west to east jet, so snow continues. Uh, but it's moving out of Colorado in a way. And then it starts to develop into this east coast storm. You can kind of see how everything's running out there and spilling towards the east coast. That'll develop an area of low pressure out there. But then watch what happens across the west. The arcing of the jet, we start to see the ridge basically build across the west coast. And everything uh, is routed up into parts of Canada and B.C. That's where everything goes um, through 12.6. Now, Maybe late in the period we can break this down, but that's the forecast through 12.6 for the high-level winds. Okay, here is the forecast radar and satellite. <clears throat> so by 5.30 this afternoon, the very last parts of this storm system with snow in southern Colorado, northern New Mexico, and then it moves away. We got leftover snow in the northern tier for a couple of days. Now this is Friday in the afternoon on the 29th. Everything at this point and beyond is going up into B.C. and especially up into the higher latitudes, northern parts of B.C. You can see it's really targeting those areas. Everything in the lower 48 across the west is high and dry with this, uh, this area of high pressure that stays in control all the way through 12.5 and 12.6. And that's it. Okay, my latest numbers look like this. Rest of today or all of today through tomorrow, another 1 to 4 for a lot of Colorado. Uh, mainly on the continental divide and south. There's a bit more in my forecast for Kuchara, but otherwise it's kind of in that one to four inch zone for most places. It's on its way out. A little bit of snow for the northern tier and a little bit for parts of BC in the interior, but more in northern BC. All right, so the second time period, you can really see the drastic change here. With high pressure ridging, it forces the arc and the jet and everything is guided up into parts of BC. And some of those places up there in northern BC could see a foot or more, but that's, that's pretty high up there uh, in, the, in the northern latitudes. But otherwise, interior BC, one to four. One to four inches will probably do it. Um, let's go to the northeast. So this runs all of today through 12-1. I wanted to capture this storm system on 28 and 29. So the numbers for some places have definitely gone down. The storm does not look as tightly wound or as strong. Um, so 4 to 10 inches, 4 to 12 inches will kind of do it. And 12 is really um, on the high end. I mean, for like maybe Mount Snow and Magic Mountain, but that's, you know, Snow Ridge is going to benefit from some lake effect. But everybody else is sort of in that 4 to 8 inch zone. Killington, Sugar Bush, Jay Peak, um, Sunday River, um, Mount Washington. So unfortunately, the storm not looking quite as big as it did a couple of days ago, but this is where we stand as of right now. All right, we'll end on this snow map for the rest of today and tomorrow. Again, some leftover snow today, especially this morning in Colorado and northern New Mexico, and then it moves out, and then everything shifts into parts of Canada. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. I appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.